Hello everyone, and welcome to Etalan. Well, well, it seems I'm still in lockdown. Well, of course this sucks, because it means I can't go out for doll supplies. This has given me a great opportunity to work on something I've been wanting to do for ages, which is to repaint an original Monster High doll in my own style. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading your comments. With that all being said, let's get started. For today's video, I'm going to be revamping Frankie Stein from the Monster High series. I was so inspired to do this after seeing Hexian's Bratz repaints and Delightful's Monster High Haunted series repaints. This Frankie seems to have had a very long life with her previous owner, who has taken quite good care of her. Only issues, of course, is the texture on the face and the knotted dirty hair. The idea I have for this doll was to keep the original hair, but give her a new face. To start this off, I'm going to remove the clothes and then head to the bathroom for cleaning. With acrylic hair, you can set a style with hot water. Basically, melting the bonds into the hair will keep hair straight or curly, etc. Setting the water to hot, I am going to be cleaning and brushing out the hair. Over time, the hair has become caked in the glue that's inside the vinyl. What I had noticed from this, not only was the doll's hair caked in this glue, it had also caused discolouring, to make the hair that was previously white a kind of yellow colour. After three washes, the front of the hair looks fine, but the back still has glue residue. <laughs> I was so disappointed with this because the cleaning method seemed to have worked in the past, but I guess this hair was just too far gone with the glue and the discoloration. Oh well, snip snip. <laughs> Getting some hot water again, I'm just going to soak the head to help loosen the glue that's inside the head. This will make it easier to remove. Using some pliers, I'm just going to start removing the glue and the hair plugs. Uh, it looks absolutely disgusting, doesn't it? But it's so satisfying. To prep the new face, I'm going to be using 100% acetone. Remove all the factory paint for a nice clean base. For the hair, I wanted to go with the original black and white, but as well I'll be mixing in some silver grey into the white bundle. Doing this will add some wonderful dimension to the hair. The yarn I'm using here is 100% acrylic. To get started on the hair, I'm going to isolate around 20 to 30 centimeter bundles and we'll be brushing them out with a pet brush and then straightening them. To try something a little different, I decided to try rerouting. A couple of months ago, I said in a video that I have no idea where to buy a rerouting tool here in Australia, and the community was so ridiculously kind to just flood me with DIY recipes. Thank you so, so much to everyone for the tips on how to make this at home. To make the rerouting tool, I'm going to get an embroidery needle and snip off the end with some pliers. Then attach it to an X-Acto knife handle here I added some glue from a glue gun just to add a little bit of stability for the needle to keep it nice and in place. Grabbing a little bit of yarn at a time, I'm going to start plunging the hair into the pre-existing holes in the head. Okay, don't hate me. But after an hour or so, I realised it wasn't really working out the way I was wanting it to be. 
the way I was wanting to envision this style just seems to be um, not really working out with my very, very novice rerouting skills. So instead, I removed all those hairs and decided to just create wefts. Let's get started on the face. Spraying the face with a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. Using Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, I'll start sketching out the face. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm still in lockdown. In my previous video, I was halfway through a doll at the time uh, when we went into lockdown. So kind of had to just work with the supplies that I had on hand, which was challenging, um, very challenging, but I'm always up for a challenge. Of course, however, it seems the lockdown has been extended, which very much limits my abilities to get supplies. I feel as if I'm in a perpetual state of waiting for the postman to deliver me some goodies so I can keep working. I'm such a restless soul when it comes to creating. When I'm in a creative mood, I'm just, no prep, just start, I just, I just want to do this. But of course I can't do that now, I have to be patient, unfortunately. Sometimes when I create dolls, I love to just take my time in hobby shops, fabric suppliers and charity shops. Just walking through and seeing the different textures and colours and building the design from what, what looks nice and feels nice and all those weird things. Being locked inside, of course, has made it really hard to create due to the delays in products arriving. But as well, it's kind of harder to build a character when you've lost that ritualistic way of doing things. Maybe that's just a neurodivergent take on character creation, but I really enjoy that aspect of creating. There's no use, however, in just waiting around for supplies to arrive, of course. But to instead just work on something else, like I'm doing here. While locked inside, I found myself starting to listen to new podcasts, primarily Law by Aaron Mankey. I felt it was so in theme with the Stoll's creation, being a podcast on non-fiction horror history. Nothing better than listening to spooky podcasts while creating a spooky lass. It really made me want to explore more of the Frankenstein-like elements of this doll's creation, while of course not differing too far from the original design. In the original design, Frankie has stitches on her cheek. I wanted to elongate that design to make it more 3D realistic and dimensional, bringing the cuts from her, from her cheek up to her eye and then up towards her forehead and then across her mouth on the other side, adding some staples just for the aesthetic. In my original face-up concept, I was going to have open sores on the face, like in the under eye so you could actually see the eye in its socket, but I felt as if this would be leaning way too hard into more of a horror-based doll, and would be kind of taking away from the original character. She's meant to be quite beautiful instead of um, kind of creepy in a way. And of course, if I was to revamp the rest of the dolls as well, I didn't want her to be too um, drastically different to their aesthetics. But of course, having those ideas it just means I can replicate it in another doll in the future. In creating the cuts, I started mapping out where I wanted them to be placed with a dark blue watercolour pencil. And with a white pencil, I'm just going to strike where I want the staples to be placed. Then with a blue-green soft pastel mixture, I'm just going to start shading the face on the lines by just brushing over them. I'll also be lightly contouring the face on the forehead, temples and eyes and sealing that in with a new spray of Mr. Super Clear. Grabbing the white again, I'm going to start defining those lines. The basic idea I had was to add white or a lighter colour to the edges of the line and it will make it look as if it's raised. For the staples, I'm just going to do a basic outline in grey, and we'll be going over that with white, grey and black to create an ombre, darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. This will give off a metallic look design without having to use metallic paint. I felt as if using metallic paint, one would make it kind of hard with using a matte varnish because it would cloud the metallic, but I feel as if it would just be too striking on the face and would pull away from the rest of the design. So doing this seems to be a perfect balance.
Just before sealing the cuts layer with another layer of Mr. Super Clear, I'm going to start working on the eyes. For this, I'm going to start sketching out the irises and developing the eyeshadow, as well as adding a pop of colour to the lips. I'm not sure what on earth happened here. I had reference photos of the original design on my computer, but I, I don't know what happened with my brain. I used purple on the lips when it's so clearly meant to be red, and I didn't realise until I was making the thumbnail that I'd done something wrong. Uh, brain not work, I guess. <laughs> I think I've said it before in a video, but ironically, Frankie Stein being the face of the Monster High brand, I have never customised a Frankie before. After X amount of customs that I've created, I've never been able to make a Frankie mould work. Thankfully, however, it seems that I've just been collecting a really weird batch, because after two years or so of customising, I've finally found a Frankie that works. In all honesty, I had come to the consensus that I would never be able to customise a Frankie. But here I am eating my own words. This being my first time it actually working out. And you know damn well I was so chuffed, I was so proud of myself. Over the last few months I've been trying my best to collect some secondhand re-released Monster High characters from various sellers online. So far I've got my hands on a Draculaura, Claudine, Spectra, Venus and this Frankie. Of course I know eventually I will get people telling me to leave them as is, but I think it's important to remember that these aren't really collector's items, they're far too damaged to be that. And I think it's so exciting and special to give such an iconic character your own little twist. I think it makes it so unique, and if you don't think so, and you think that I'm just ruining a perfectly good doll, that's completely fine too, and completely valid. <laughs> This doll has honestly been such an enjoyable creation and it makes me so chuffed that I'm finally able to work on this and make it my own. For the eyebrows, I felt the original eyebrow colour was so out of place in the original design. Red-orange toned brows with a blue toned colour scheme just seemed like a strange choice. <laughs> and it just kind of was so striking on the face. To rectify this, I decided to go in with a grey pencil and using a cool toned brown on the edges of the eyebrows. I forgot to say, but for the makeup, I had forgot to hit record on my camera on the first layer of doing the eyeshadows. But to make the colour of the eyeshadows not bleed into the rest of the face, and to keep its shape and keeping the symmetrical and neatness of it, I did use masking tape just the same way that they do um, when you're doing makeup, I guess. I just put it on the skin um, and then I dabbed the powders just to keep it really nice and neat and get the shape so that it makes it easier for later on. Once I was happy with how the doll was looking, I'll add a layer of mint coloured micro glitter to the face and purple to the eyes to add some shimmer and dimension and sealing it in with a new coat of sealant. Once that was dry, I'll add the last step which is the eyelashes and do a final seal of Mr. Super Clear, and we can move on to the hair again. While Frankie definitely has two-toned hair, she very much leans towards a white base with black streaks. Starting to do the hairline, I'll make my first pass with black. To make sure I apply the black evenly, I'm going to just map out lines that I'll follow from the base of the hairline to the top of the head, just to make sure I can have a nice striped effect. While creating this hairstyle, I thought that it would be such a 
wonderful way to add a pop of colour if you were creating a wig or doll hair. Like if you wanted to do a blue base, you could add a little bit of purple or pink for a nice synth wave or cyberpunk look. Once the whole hairline is covered, I'll start adding larger wefts like normal. Once they were placed, I'll start adding the next layer of black wefts until I get all the way to the top. For the parting, I got the wefts and folded the glue part onto itself and then pressed it down with a straightener just to basically hide the glue part of the weft. I did however off camera remove this section and added a little bit more black on top of the parting wefts just because I think it was looking way too monochrome for my liking. Something I love to do when I'm creating doll hair is to razor the hair. Natural hair is tapered at the ends, so doing this adds a really wonderful realism to the hairstyle. I do however feel as if doing this was a mistake on this doll, and think that I really should have thought about it before I did it. With the razor, I just went in and did it the same way that I always do, and it never fails. <laughs> but however, I think for this style, it would have greatly benefited if I had targeted just the white and silver wefts just on their own as I was working my way up the hair. Just so that I could thin those bits out without having to cut away at the black bits. I think doing this got rid of some of the dramatic sectioning at the ends. Of course, there's nothing I could do about it now, but for future reference, I'll definitely have to do it differently. Keeping that 2000 style, I give Frankie her little fringe boop by just backcombing a little and tying her off with a small elastic. As a later step, I added two loose pieces to the fringe because I felt as if it blended the 2000 style so much more. Last step before I put her head back on is glossing with gloss varnish. It's honestly one of my favourite steps, it really pops out all that detail work and gives it such a realistic touch. While I was detailing the face, I also decided to remove the original cuts and staples on the body and doing it in the same style that I'd done on the face, as well as blushing the body with soft pastels. I felt as if doing this tied the whole design together. When I found this doll, I was so happy to find her. For a second hand doll, she has very much been treasured so well for years, and she was in such good shape. After giving the clothes a wash, I did notice however the tie became loose and so needed to be patched up before I added the head back on. This doll however did lose the belt and earrings in her lifetime, so I guess she's not 100% complete, but hey, that can be our little secret. Once I was happy with everything, I attached the head to the body and take some photos. Thank you all so much for watching. Do you like Frankie's revamp? Would you like to see more revamping of these characters? 
And if so, who would you want me to revamp next? Let me know in the comments below. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. It really helps out the channel and I am so close to 100k, so I'd love it if you could help me out. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. With your support, I am able to make this possible. As always, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see next, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.